uh, real quickly before we uh, get out of here real quickly, I don't know if anyone got a chance to check right now, but uh, the athletic right now, just a very interesting uh, list right now. And I, I really love this. And this all began on July 8th, I believe it was. Uh, this list they were doing, they were doing their own version of the uh, NFL uh, 100 team, like how the NFL network did back around after uh, thanks, going into Thanksgiving back in 2019. They revealed their 100 all-time team for the 100th anniversary of the season. and. Don't forget, in that uh, year, I mean, the leaderboard in that one, the Steelers had about nine players all together. Raiders had the most players with 13. Well, according to Athletic, they did it strictly on players. While the F, I mean, the NFL Network uh, did it on not only players, but coaches, too. This one was just all the greatest 100 players. And the Steelers right now, they come in second place, tied up with the Chicago Bears with eight players all together on this list. And for the Steelers uh, representatives on this uh, list right here, you have uh, for their very first uh, selection was Demari, Demari Dawson at number 99 uh, center. Uh, their second guy that was chosen on this list came in at number 71, Mel Blunt, quarterback, uh, all-decade team. You also had uh, Terry Bradshaw coming in uh, for their third one at number 69. Jack, and then you had uh, Mike Webster at 57, center. Uh, outside linebacker Jack Cam at number 52. Then you also had uh, Jack Lambert, number 37. Rob Woodson, number 26. The next one was Mean Joe Green. So they had eight players all together. The Packers, who had the most on here, their players include uh, defensive end uh, Willie Davis, quarterback Bart Stahl, Brett Favre, and Aaron Rodgers had three quarterbacks on this one. You also had uh, Ray Nitschke, middle linebacker, Herb Adderley, Cornerback, Forrest Gregg, tackle, uh, wide receiver, Don Hudson, and Reggie White, the minister of defense, who played for both the Eagles and Packers. But I asked a few people, got a few people's opinion. A lot of people remember him as Green Bay Packer. And I would have to agree with that. They got the most players. For the Bears, real quick, just out of curiosity, their players on this all time 100. Uh, team for the athletic. Uh, they had uh, Mike Singletary, a uh, middle linebacker, tight end Mike Ditka, a uh, center Bulldog Turner, uh, running backs Gail Sayers, Walter Payton. You also had quarterback Sid Luckman, fullback Bronco Nagurski, and uh, of course, middle linebacker Nick Buckus. He makes the top 10. And it's hard to argue with that. A guy who's made two all decade teams. A guy who's never tasted the playoffs in his career when playing with that Bears organization. I mean, for the most part, he only got a chance to play in like uh, three seasons at the newly Soldier Field. He played most of his career in Wrigley Field, basically. So for like uh, the first six seasons, I mean, those Bears were playing Wrigley Field before they made the move to Soldier Field back in 1971. I mean, and this was an awesome team. And just uh, for the top 10, uh, in case everyone was wondering, who made the foul uh, 10 uh, roster spots? Of course, I mentioned uh, Dick Buckus. You had John Unitas, uh, quarterback of the Baltimore Colts. Colts coming in at number nine. Walter Payton at number eight, the Chicago Bears. Uh, seven was Peyton Manning, uh, deservedly so. Joe Montana at number six. Reggie White at number five. Lawrence Taylor, LT, at number four. Uh, guy, the second player to uh, not only won Defense Player of the Year, but also League MVP at the same time. I mean, that was uh, truly amazing right there in its own right. I mean, when you look at I me, mean, LT, I mean, that guy was a wrecking machine, no doubt. When you, when you really uh, pull it all together. 
I mean, he, he became the second person to win that honor, just like Al Page did. I mean, Lawrence Taylor won this award three times, the Defensive Player of the Year. Then you also have followed by Lawrence Taylor, Jerry Rice at number three, Jim Brown number two, and last but not least, Tim Brown, I mean, uh, Tom Brady, TV 12 at number one, and who could argue that? I mean, despite all the controversy you had with Spygate, the Flategate, whatever, I mean, it's hard to overlook a guy winning more Super Bowls than any franchise with seven. I mean, the guy is just purely the wear. This is the best of the best. The only, thing, the only beef I have with this list on here, no disrespect, but safeties, I mean, for the safeties position, they only had two on here, which is Ed Reed and Ronnie Lott. It's kind of hard to argue with that list right there, but I would love to see Troy Palomaro get in this list. I think the only thing that killed uh, Troy Palomaro in his career was the fact that he wasn't able to stay healthy as much after that last uh, Super Bowl victory. I mean, when you start to look at it, I mean, the guy has only missed about 17 uh there's only 16 games he did not account for that he didn't start. He only started 142 out of 158 games. And I think just for the reasons alone, where he had like the two seasons where he was legitimately hurt back in 2009 and 2012, I think if anything, if he would stay a little bit more uh, healthier in that, that probably would have cinched it up for him because a guy like Ed Reed, too, I mean, who's definitely flawless in his own right, I mean, he didn't start missing. A significant amount of games, but not he didn't miss it hardly any games at all. But I just think Troy Palmolive is a looseness right there. Uh, very disappointed to not see him make this list though. He didn't make it on the NFL Network's uh, 100 all time team back in 2019, yellow on the athletic. But again, this is the best of the best. Steelers getting eight players all together, tied for second most with Chicago Bears. You can't argue with anything from that. I mean, a big chunk of it, of course, coming from the Steel Curtain dynasty back in the 1970s. So, very good list. What a great way to uh, kick off the season. It ended on Wednesday. Uh, Tom Bray's name got revealed, and uh, here we go. So, real quick, with fair or foul, Steelers will get their first uh, losing season this year under Mike Tomlin. I'm going to go with foul. I realize they got one of the tougher strength of schedules right now. But at the same time, when you get tougher opponents, continues to bring out the team the best. And as long as you got a healthier Ben Rosberger, we'll see about that. But I, I'm going to say foul in there for right now. Let's just wait and see on that one. And then uh, last but not least, first loss of the season versus the Bills. I'll say fair on that. I, I think the Steelers could definitely keep this close, but to be honest with you, the Bills, they got a lot of tricks up their sleeve too. They can do stuff defensively. Of course, Josh Allen's will be the highlight, but that's all I got for you guys tonight. So thanks for everybody uh, getting a chance to tune in here on the Mass Steel Podcast. Once again, you guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, on Twitter at Mass Steel CGR, and on Instagram at Mass Steel Nation. So I leave you. Don't be trolling. Be rolling. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. I got it.